So you've seen that you can combine two masks with the combination methods that we've learned and with copying content from one mask to another. But both of these methods have a disadvantage. They are destructive. So they create a new mask by destroying the pixels of the old one. You can combine two masks, but those pixels then are uh, baked into the, the mask, the new mask. So you cannot change any component of it. But there is a very um, simple but yet powerful way of combining masks non-destructively, at least when it comes to intersections. Now let me demonstrate this on, on this example here. Um, as you can remember, we have added a curves adjustment to the sky in this image. Uh, let me zoom in here a bit so that you really see it. <coughs> and um, let's say I wanted to make this um, curves adjustment even a bit more extreme. So I'm really pushing the curve right next to the histogram here to make this sky really, really contrasty and punchy. But what that um, means is that our hill line here, or the horizon line, and the hills below it um, don't match the, um, the sky anymore. They're too light, they're too bright. And right along the edge here, you get a very nasty line of, of a very bright and, um, and dark colors as an effect of the curves adjustment layer. Now, the way to cure this would be to go into this mask and take a brush with a, with a soft and big tip, a low flow value here, and then just brush along this edge. And let me make the image visible here again. And what that does is it effectively lightens the sky just at the transition so that this difference from between the now darker sky and the bright foreground is not that visible anymore. So you can see that this gradually cures the problem and the transition between the hills and the sky is now much better than before. But you can also see what that did with the mask. If I activate the mask again, we've essentially destroyed the pixels of this mask and we've lost this very nice and sharp selection of the sky that we had. Um, and that's a pity because we've worked on this really hard and we would like to preserve this to confine any later adjustments that we make to the sky too. So that's really not the way to go here. Let me uh, get rid of this and I'm going to revert the image to its original state. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a to, to uh, put this adjustment layer here inside a group. So I'm going to press Ctrl G on the keyboard, which puts the selected layers into a new group. And now I'm going to add a mask to this group. So you notice that we've got a group with a mask and an adjustment layer with a mask. And the what this means is that both of these masks will be intersected effectively to decide which part of parts of this adjustment layer will be shown in the um, final image. So at the moment we've got a completely white mask here. So that means nothing really has changed. We see uh, the parts that are revealed by this um, inner mask on the curves adjustment layer. But now I'm going to add a gradient to this mask that is going to solve our problem non-destructively. So I'm going to select this new mask on the group and I'm going to pick the gradient tool. The gradient tool is in a group with this paint bucket tool here. So if it's not visible, just click and hold and then select the gradient tool. In the options bar, you should select the first option here, which uh, creates a gradient from the foreground to the background color. Now I'm going to, to reset the foreground and background to uh, white and black. And you see that we get a black, a white to black gradient here. And the other thing that you need to do is to select the linear gradient option here, just right of this uh, drop down box. Make sure that the opacity is at 100%. And now, having the mask selected on the group, 
I'm going to click and drag on the image and that is going to create a gradient as you see. I can also show you that. So we've got white at the top, black at the bottom and a smooth transition between the two. And now effectively you see that the visibility of this adjustment layer that we added to the sky is now decided by the intersection between this gradient mask and the original sky mask. So neither of the two has been uh, changed or destructed by this operation. You can still go in and work on the sky mask individually or on the gradient mask. You can delete this gradient mask completely and the other mask or masks will be preserved while you're doing that. Now we've put an adjustment layer with the mask into a group with the mask. So we've got like two levels of masks nested within each other. But you can do this um, um, to a varying degree of depth. So you can put the adjustment layer into another group and put some mask on it. You can put this group into a group and put a mask on it. So you can build very complex structures to have your masks uh, effectively being intersected with each other and to be able to work on each of them separately and non-destructively.